good afternoon. Um, my name is Mike Sarhat. I'm the director of the Chatham County Savannah Narcotics Team. I took over in October of 2020, and um, what I'd, I'd like to first thank the press for being here, which is a very, um, very serious issue that we're discussing today, and I have some things to announce. And I also want to thank everybody, all my uh, shareholders, and I want to introduce everybody individually. So, Lydia McRae from uh, Chatham EMS, Ralph Iorio from DEA, his supervisor, one of his supervisors, David Cross from uh, DEA, Will Clark from FBI, um, a close friend that I've got to know during this process, Charles Ringling from the Recovery Place, and then we've got Chief Minter, uh, Ms. Jones, the district attorney right behind me, and then, um, <laughs> and then, and then um, uh, Chief Enoch with the Board of Ed, who's been a big part of this process, and then uh, Assistant uh, Superintendent Kim Hancock. Hancock, along with obviously Sheriff Wilcher, who's uh, uh, been a big part of this also, and then Matt Libby, Ashley Brown, and then Carl Kononke from the U.S. Attorney's Office. So as you can see, you know, our, our, all of law enforcement here in the county is represented today other than three of the chiefs that aren't here, only because they had conflicts. So when I first took over in, 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 20, in October of 2020, <clears throat> the national problem of opioid overdose deaths across the country, we were, we were running between 70 and 75,000 overdose deaths a year. You fast forward to 2020, and that number is now exceeds 100,000 100, people a year. So back in 19, to put that in perspective, the seating capacity of the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium was about 78,000 people. That's about what we were losing every year. Now we've gotten up to, uh, I think the numbers are looking at about 103 to 106,000 individuals a year dying from opioid overdose. The, in, a, in, a, in a brief period of time, so from last year to this year, that's up 25%, which is astronomical. Right? The, the statistics, some of the statistics that have been coming out is that the number one cause of death for Americans age 18 to 45 is fentanyl and heroin overdoses. The number one cause. Very sad. So, um, locally here, back in 2006, the average uh, we were running about 26 overdose deaths a year. Fast forward, or that was 2019. Fast forward one year, those numbers doubled. Last year we were at 54 overdose deaths as of November. So we still have another month. It takes a while for these for the numbers to get to come in. As of November, that 54 number is, is pretty accurate. That came from GBI and the um, mental examiner's office in Atlanta who takes all the statistics from all the offices across the, uh, across the state. So I feel pretty confident about that number. That is a 100% increase since 2019, all right? So the big problem with this is that is, uh, is now we have the presence of fentanyl, and that's what's causing these deaths. So back in 2019, we were looking at 26 overdose, and maybe 25% of those 26 were opioid overdoses that had fentanyl. Fast forward, we're at 54 overdose deaths as of November for last year, and about 75% of those have fentanyl present. So it's fentanyl. Is, is, the big, is the big issue here. So just as recently as this week, we had a first responder that had an accidental contact and through their skin got exposed to something that had to be Narcan, had to be transported, and they're fine. I guarantee that's fentanyl. So just through the contact through the skin, 
They didn't even, they weren't using it through the skin. They, we almost lost one of our first responders, mm -hmm. all right? So this is a multifaceted problem, so we're gonna have a multifaceted response to it. So, um, you know, that's, you're basically law enforcement, first responders, you know, it's a, a, a recovery, and then the last component would be, really should be the first component is education and awareness. So I'm here today to announce that we're gonna do a education awareness program for the public, all right? The first event we will hold will be at the auditorium at Islands High School. So I'm inviting the public to come March 24th at 6 p.m. at the auditorium at Islands. This will be the first of several that we're gonna run across the county. We're gonna start on the east side, we're gonna move west. We're gonna get that word out and try and educate and get everybody aware of what this problem is. So as you can see behind me, this is, this is all the people that, that wake up every day to try and keep the people of Chatham County safe. So um, I welcome everybody to come out to this event. I can't stress the importance of the press promoting this, in, uh, this event and then be there to cover it for me. Because you're not covering it for me, you're covering it for the, camp, for the people of this county. All right, and then in closing, uh, I'm here to ask any, you know, answer any questions relative to the event, if there is any. Yeah, Director Sorry, can you mind talking a little bit more about what people can expect when they go to this event, what they'll learn, what they may, uh, maybe some parents out there might be interested yeah. in attending? Yes, Max. Um, it's gonna be about a two hour event, and basically what we're gonna do is I've got a, 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 a short video, and then we'll do a PowerPoint presentation to talk about opioids and the addiction process and just how, how, how it takes over, takes over somebody, along with explaining how the, the potency of heroin versus fentanyl and just the dangers of, uh, of opioids in general. And then at the end of that, we'll have a, a panel made up of a lot of people that are sitting behind, are standing behind me, the experts I would consider, to answer anybody's question in, in, in the audience. And then, and then we'll move that, we'll pick it up and put the show on the road. It's gotta be pretty upsetting watching these overdose deaths increase um, since you moved here, since you came here and took over the program. Uh, as a parent especially, do you mind speaking to that? Yeah, I think, um, I think we need, you know, and this is why we've, we've made this decision to start doing this awareness and education because I think there's a lot of people out there, a lot of parents out there that don't understand it. They're doing, you know, they're taking the reason their kids go to work, come back. So it's upon us, you know, it's our responsibility to educate and have them become aware of the situation, okay? I mean, I could talk for hours about how I think the parents need to, you know, I, well, I take that back. I could, I could talk for hours how Director Mike Sar as dad would handle his kids. But I, I can tell you this, that, you know, th this is a one-shot deal, all right? One time, they could die. And so, and so, the, the, and especially now, I was talking to one of, the, one of the reporters just a second ago, and he was absolutely right, he's from Memphis, you all know I came from Knoxville, all right? My office, every time we go out and we do any type of enforcement, we're seeing, and we're making, a, <coughs> excuse me, we're making arrests, multi-drug, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, pills. That's what we're seizing from one drug dealer, all right? To include fentanyl, all right? The cross-contamination factor is, is ridiculous. So you may have somebody that thinks they're, they're, they're smoking weed or they're, they're, they're sniffing some cocaine, could be laced with fentanyl. I'll put it one step past that. They are now actively putting fentanyl on all those drugs to, to have a, a different effect, okay? So I haven't even gotten into the pill problem, okay? And how, how these people are, are, are mass produced
producing pills in basements with, with pill presses that ought to be sitting in Eli Lilly, okay? Tens of thousands of pills that they can manufacture like that, all laced with fentanyl, because it's cheaper, it's easier, and they've got access to it. So, you know, what, what somebody goes to the pharmacy to get, and they take a look at it and go, oh, no, that's, that, that came from Pfizer. They're getting the, 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 the dyes and the stamps out of China, and they're doing it in their basement, and you cannot tell the difference unless you really know what you're looking at. So some kid thinks he's, he, he, thinks he's, he's getting something that, that uh, his neighbor friend took out of his mom's cabinet, and it didn't come from there, and it's laced with fentanyl. One shot, you lose it. That's why it's important. Hi there. Would you speak to the importance of viewing this as a public health crisis and addressing it as such? Well, I guess when when they come out and say that the leading cause of death for 18-year-olds and 45-year-olds is is overdose deaths attributable to opioids and fentanyl, that that sounds like a crisis to me. Okay, and and. The, the big reason we need to keep, do this is to get the awareness and the education out to the public. We can, we can arrest, we're not arresting our way out of this. Not happening, okay? There's a lot of reasons and a lot of impact on how to, how to go about doing this, okay? As an outfit with CNT, we, we work very closely with our federal partners. As you can see, we've got our federal partners up here. So typically our, our investigative cases start here locally, they branch out, we work with our federal partners, and, and we're going outside the county, outside the state, to, to aggressively investigate, arrest, prosecute individuals that are bringing dope into, into this county, right? So we've got the U.S. Attorney's Office, Carl Kanoki here, and we have Ms. Jones. So we have federal and state prosecutors that are fully embedded and, and working with us on a daily basis. So there's, there, right now, I, I, don't, I don't see of any other problem, issue, especially now that COVID's behind us. This is it, and the numbers are gonna go up. And so for the first time in my career, I feel like I'm on the front end of this problem locally. And so we're gonna try and, we're gonna try and step it down. That's what we wanna do. And good afternoon. Problem as you mentioned, uh, but the return after a two-year hiatus uh, from the St. Patrick's Day uh, festivities that Sena traditionally ha uh, have a very big event, and might be kind of off subject, forgive me. But do you see that maybe overdoses might be a little bit on the increase uh, of this St. Patrick's Day uh, holiday celebration? Or no, I, I I personally don't see any correlations between that. And, and the overdose deaths. Okay, and, and, and two, this might be a rhetorical question. You know, you mentioned earlier that, you know, these kids or young adults or whatever, they're thinking that, you know, hey, this is perfectly safe, you know, I'm not worried about it. Is it just simply, you know, the lack of, of education? Um, drugs are never good, uh, but as, you know, as seen myself, in the, growing up in the 80s, um, I had my have a tendency to think that, you know, although drugs were bad, they weren't as maybe as what that does to a community, and I know that what, the, what that does to 
individuals. The difference here is, is, is crack was very addictive. If you took crack, you could get hooked on it for the first time, okay? And then you did it, you did it, you did it, and slowly your body they were deteriorated and people died, okay? Not good, all right? Here, you've got a drug that you take it the first time, like crack, you become addicted, like crack. But you also end up dead the first time. That's the difference. That's why we have to worry about our first responders. That's why we've developed this Narcan, Naloxone uh, program to make sure our first responders have that at all times. So it's, you know, that, that is the, the, the scare. The difference between 2019, 26 overdose deaths, and 54 overdose deaths is not because we have more people doing heroin, and, and that's not the case. That's not my belief. My belief is that, that the fentanyl coming across the border that is now getting in our neighborhoods, those people are dying because there's fentanyl in that heroin, or in that other different, in that pill, or in that whatever. That's why they're dying. That's why the jump, I mean, there's no other excuse. There's no way the country went, doubled their heroin use in, 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 in a year. I don't believe that. It's the fentanyl that doubled the overdose deaths. Um, so you mentioned kind of some of these potential imports of this fentanyl, of these more dangerous drugs. Um, do you think Savannah being a port city has anything to do with this? No. Okay. <laughs> um, my second question, uh, you spoke about, you know, we have to educate the kids. I, I think a lot of parents are sitting out there thinking, you know, my kid's 12. When do we have to start educating them? What's, what's the age range that you really see? Now, I knew that question was coming, and that's a hot potato, okay? I'm going to tell you what Mike Sarr had with his three kids would do. At 12, I'm sitting them down to talk about fentanyl and all that. Now, another parent may think that's too young. The Board of Education may think that's too young. But Mike Sarhat, I'm sitting down with my kids. Thank you. So you mentioned the first, um, I guess just for March 24th, you guys already have any tentative plans for any other events just to get the word out and awareness? Not, not yet. So I want to get this one off and running. We have a lot of moving parts. Um, Chief Enoch. And the, and the Board of Ed has been gracious enough to let us use the auditorium there. So <clears throat> once we get that off and running, then um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick another site, and then um, I'll work with uh, Ms. Glassby, the PIO from the county, and we'll probably make some arrangements to, to stream all that. But I want, I'd like to get one off the ground first. And obviously talking about these overdoses, obviously like to have none of them, but with this uh, new method you guys are trying out, is there, do you guys have a range in your heads of what you're thinking and what you're trying to see um, in terms of numbers, uh, a decrease with what you guys are actively doing now? Uh, I mean, I, I mean. Zero. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one, one is too many. You know, do, do I think what I'm gonna do is gonna, is gonna you know, what all of us are doing on a daily basis is going to go, okay, now we're down to 50% from last year. I doubt it. But, you know, we got to start somewhere. So this is where we're starting. Right here. <coughs> Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it.